Today we're going to learn about this turn-of-the-century, family-run bottling company on this episode of Antique Bottle Stories. Well, let's start with Jacob and Elizabeth Klaus. They were married in Germany and they had four boys. They emigrated to America about 1856, just before the Civil War, and they settled in Elizabeth, New Jersey. We're going to focus on George Klaus. He was born in 1835. He has three brothers, Louis, Frederick, and Henry. The earliest city directory that Ancestry has is 1866. Their dad, Jacob, has already died in 1862. He was only 47. Their mom is still living. Now this is before they started the bottling plant, so here are what the brothers are doing right now. George is a machinist, and Louis is a cutler. This Henry, the baker, I think he's their uncle, he's their dad's brother. So, in 1868, George has started the soda water company. It doesn't say what the name of the company is, though. Elizabeth's their mom, Henry, their brother, is a jeweler, and Lewis hasn't joined the bottling business yet. He's a driver here. So this 1870 census shows Elizabeth is head of the household. George and his family are living with her. Henry, the little brother of the jeweler, he's also living there too. It skips directories from the years 1868 to 1872. Here's their mom. There's Frederick, surgical and dental instruments. And the company's called George Klaus and Brother, Mineral Waters, Ale and Porter. And it confirms that Lewis is in this with George. 1877, the name has changed from George Klaus and Brother to Klaus Brothers. So George ends up having six kids and Lewis has three. Fast forward to 1886, Klaus Brothers is still going almost 20 years now. George is 51 now and his son, George Jr. is old enough to work. Lewis would be about 37 now. He was a little bit younger. This one starts to get a little confusing. There are lots of recycled names in this family. So their uncle, Henry, the baker, is working with his son now, also named Lewis. You're killing me. So I'm not going to talk about those guys anymore. They don't have anything to do with our story. And neither do the brothers Frederick or Henry. I just saw all these names in there and I had to kind of figure out who was who, so that's why I told you. So we will focus on the two brothers, George and Lewis, and we will focus on George Jr. and Lewis Jr. So let's just see if we can keep everybody straight. In 1888, we have the Klaus brothers and George Sr. and Jr. and Lewis Sr. and Jr. It's the first time we see an ad in the directory for them. It's pretty nice. It says 1028 Elizabeth Avenue. There are a couple pictures. This one says high grade mineral and soda waters. I guess all these buildings are the plant. It looks like it takes up a whole block by itself. They've been in business about 20 years now. And here's a picture of the main building, I guess. Here, it's this building. What a beautiful building. The drawn picture doesn't show all the trees. Well, this is the location of the Klaus bottling plant now. It doesn't look like there's anything left of that original plant. In 1890, everybody's still in their same places, but it shows George Jr. is an engineer at the plant and Lewis Jr. is a bookkeeper. In 1891, Lewis Sr. died really young at age 47. There's no story to tell us why he died. 1894, we've got some news in the paper. A guy named Edward Moore is a foreman employed at the Klaus Brothers Bottling Works. Yesterday afternoon, while working around the yard, he picked up an innocent looking wire. It proved to be charged with electricity and on touching it, Moore was thrown a dozen feet among some old bottles. He was picked up unconscious, he was taken to the hospital with bad burns on his body, and recovery is doubtful. It says how the wire became charged with electricity is a mystery. I tried looking up to see if he died for sure, but I couldn't find him for some reason. But it sounded like his chances were not good. So it skips directories again from 1890 to 1895. But in 1895, we see the name changed from Klaus Brothers to Klaus Bottling Company. We see George's other son, Henry, join the company and he's bookkeeping. 
I thought it'd be helpful if we looked at the chart again. So moving on, 1902, everyone is still good. A little ad in the directory there. 1907, the ad reads, Klaus Bottling Company, manufacturers of the celebrated Klaus Mineral Waters and Klaus Carbonated Beverages, established in 1868. The following year, in 1908, George Sr. has died from an illness he had for several weeks. It says that he was known for his charitable work. So the first generation has died off, and now the torch has been passed to the second generation. Well, they're not really young boys anymore. Here's George Jr. in 1910. He's 45 now, with his wife and twin girls. Fast forward to 1915. George Jr. and Henry also have four sisters. One of them, Augusta, is now secretary for the bottling works. George is president and treasurer. Then we have another family member here named Henry, which could be a cousin or their uncle. At this point, I can't keep all these people with the same names straight. But we've got quite a bit of family members working there now. In 1921, we still see it named Klaus Bottling Company. It skips 1922, but in 1923, it changes to Klaus Broker Company. George is still the president, and Augusta is vice president. That's pretty interesting. Ewald Broker is treasurer and general manager. Skipping ahead to 1930, George is now 65. One of his twin girls lives with him with her husband and a new baby. The son-in-law is named Sidney and he's a commercial artist. 1933, everything is still trucking along, but it skips 1934 and in 1935, the company is no more. This even says here, Augusta died in 1934 at age 66. This scan is really horrible. Here's our George. I think he's retired. Ewald Broker is now working at Union Square Hotel just down the street. So that's it for Klaus Bottling Works. There's a story online and it says that the company went bankrupt. Apparently a local remembers going to the bottling plant when he was young. He remembers the horses and he remembers there being a big dining hall where the workers were fed. He said the workers were treated as family there. He said the location of the plant was decided because there was a very nice well on that property. He said the Klaus claim to fame was that they used only natural flavorings and they scorned the Coca-Cola product. And if the depression hadn't done them in, Coke and Hoffman would have. Unfortunately, I don't have that local's name, but that gives us a little insight to what happened to them. So my bottle is a typical blown 1890s soda bottle. It would have most likely had that lightning enclosure like this. There's a little rust on the rim here from the closure. It says registered and on the back it says this bottle not to be sold, which I've talked about in other videos that that means that the company owned the bottle itself. You purchased the beverage inside and when you were done with it, you were to return it back to the company to be cleaned and reused. So this one it says Klaus Bottling Company. So here's a timeline for anybody else who finds these bottles, you can narrow the date down a little bit more. I saw a forum where some collectors of this particular bottle posted some pictures. And here's a huge array of different bottles that these guys used. And here's a couple more. I mean, they changed their design a lot. So that'll do it for today. We'll see you next time and thanks for watching.